Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at how to combine two functions in a slightly more interesting way, composition. So the composition of two functions, we have function f and a function g. We define their composition, and we denote it here by f with this little circle between them, g. So the com composition of f and g at x is defined to be first apply the function g to the input x, and then whatever comes out of that, plug that into the function f. So we read this composition sometimes from right to left. Apply the function g first, and then apply the function f second. So let's look at this in terms of a picture. So we've got x, which is our domain of our function g, and then we've got y, which is our codomain of our function g, and also the domain of our function f, and then we've got z, which is our codomain of our function f. So we've got g goes from there to there, and then f goes from here to here. And so what we're imagining is that we start with an x. So start with an x over here. We apply g to it. Boom. g gets us to some point over here, g of x. Provided that that output is in the domain of f, then we can apply f to that. And we get f of g of x. So what we did was we started with an x over here, and we ended up with an element in z over here. And this function is what we're calling the composition, which starts from this set x and ends up in this set z. Now what is the domain of the composition? What are the things that make sense to plug into it? Well, they're the things that actually can complete this journey. They're the values of x for which it makes sense to evaluate g at them and then they have to land in the domain of f in order to continue on. So the domain of a composite function, f composed of g, is the set of all x such that x is first and foremost in the domain of g, and then what comes out of that is also in the domain of f. Okay, so there's a little bit of terminology that we use here. We refer to g as the inside function. So we call it the inside function the function that gets applied first in the composition, and f will refer to it as the outside function. Okay. So let's have a look at an example. If f of x is x squared and g of x is 2x plus 1, let's find these compositions, f composed with g and g composed with f. So what's f composed with g of x? Remember, we read right to left. So the function name that's closest to the variable is the one that gets applied first. So g gets applied first, and then f gets applied to that. So what's g of x? That's 2x plus 1. That gets plugged into our function f, which is the squaring function. On the other hand, g composed of f at x is do f first, and then g second. So this is g of x squared, or 2x squared plus 1. And what we need to note here is that these are different. These functions are different. So note, f composed with g does not equal g composed with f. So the order in which the composition gets done matters. If you do it one way, you'll likely get a different function than if you do it the other way. Okay, so let's look at another example. Here we're going to compose three functions, f, g, and h. And we're going to look at the composition of h composed with f composed with g. So we're going to find that, and then we're also going to work out what the domain is. So what's h composed with f composed with g of x? Well, that would be do g first, take the result, plug it into f, take the result of that, plug it into h. And so this is then h composed with f goes with g. What's g of x? That's 3 root x. Plugging that into f, what is that? 
f is 2 to the power of the input, so this would be 2 to the power of 3 root x. And then take that result and plug it into h, which is the sine function. So this is sine of 2 to the power of 3 root x. And so there is our function. What is the domain of this function? Well, the domain is going to be the set of all inputs that we start with for which each step makes sense. We can actually work it out. So x has to be in the domain of g to begin with. So that means it has to be a non-negative number. And then once we get a result out of g, it gets plugged into f. But the domain of f is any real number, because I can take 2 to the power of any real number. So there's no restrictions there. And then whatever comes out of that function gets plugged into the sine function, and that's domain. Its domain is all real numbers. So the domain in this case, the only restriction is we needed x to be non-negative. So the domain is the set of all x in the real numbers such that x is bigger than or equal to 0. All right. So let's go ahead and look at this last example. In this last example, we're given a function, and we want to decompose it into a composition. Now, this is essentially going to be what we're going to do most in this course. What we're going to do is we're going to start with complicated functions, and we're going to want to break them down into their elementary pieces. We want to figure out how are they built up of simple functions. So with this function here, we're going to need to know how it's built up of simple functions, like linear functions, and power functions, and trig functions. How do those ones build this one up? So decomposition is really what we're going to be doing a lot of in this course. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to start with our function f of x. And we're going to see how can we decompose this. In fact, I want to decompose it into three functions, as suggested in the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on stripping off an outside function and then seeing what's left inside. And I'm going to continue in that way. So what's an outside function? What's the very last thing we do to evaluate capital F at x? Well, maybe you think about it. the first thing. First thing we do is take sine of it. Then we multiply it by 2. Then we add 1. And the very last thing we do is cube it. So our outside function, the very last thing we do, is the cubing function. So in our composition, the very last thing we do is this thing furthest to the left. That's our cubing function. Now what's left inside? What's left inside? is 1 plus 2 sine of x. And again, now I want to split that one up. What's our outside function? And what's our inside function? Our outside function, again, is the very last thing you do. So the very last thing we do, well, let's think about, we plug an x value in, we take sine of it, and then we multiply by 2 and add 1. So the very last thing we do is we plug it into a linear function. So that's going to be our g of x. And our inside function is our trig function, sine of x. And so in this case, we have then that f of x is h composed with g composed with f of x. And so there's our decomposition. All right, that's it for this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time.